very good morning students welcome to narayan pu college today let us start a syllabus before starting a first chapter let us discuss a overall syllabus which you people are going to study in a first year puc now we will let us see the overall syllabus which you are going to study for the first year puc here in your syllabus majorly we have four units we have four units and the units consist of one mark question two mark question three mark question and five mark question now let us see briefly what are the contents which is going to consist by the four units in the first unit that is unit a unit a it's a fundamentals of computers you are going to study a fundamentals of a computers in this unit you are going to have one one mark question two two mark questions three three marks question three and five mark question two overall this total unit which is going to consist of which is going to consist of 27 marks which is going to consist of 27 marks in this unit a we have totally covers four chapters totally covers a uh, four chapters the first chapter is overview of computers first chapter is overview of computers which consists of one mark one question two marks one question and five marks one question which carries a uh, eight marks chapter two input output and memory units here you you will be having one mark one question two mark one question three mark one question which carries overall six marks chapter three data representation here we have only two questions the two question comes from one mark one question from three marks one question from five marks which is carries a total marks of eight fourth chapter software concept here you're going to have one two mark question and one three mark question the overall weightage of this chapter is five the total unit which is going to consist of 27 marks and we used to have a unit b in a unit b we are going to see that problem solving methodology problem solving methodology here you are going to have one 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 mark question one from the two marks question one from the three mark question and one from the five mark question a uh, totally you are going to have 11 marks in this unit we have don't have any sub chapters in unit b we have only one chapter that is problem solving methodology when you talk about the unit c unit c is programming in c++ programming in c++ the total weightage of this chap unit is 48 marks and you are going to study totally nine chapters in unit c let us see what are the chapters here we have object oriented programming that is your sixth chapter which consists of one three mark question and the chapter 7 chapter 7 which is going to have the introduction to c++ interaction to c++ chapter 8 data types chapter 9 input output operators chapter 10 control statements chapter 11 we have arrays chapter 12 we have functions chapter 13 user defined functions and chapter 14 is structures these are the different chapters which comes under the unit c in a unit c the overall weightage of the marks is 48 marks how many marks it is 48 marks which has been consist by the unit c and unit d it is element in a unit d that is elementary concept of word processing spreadsheets and web designing a uh, unit D overall it consists of three chapters with a weightage of totally 19 marks. The three chapters are the word processing which carries one one mark question, one two mark question 
totally it's three marks chapter 16 spreadsheets in a spreadsheet you'll be having one one mark question and two five mark question totally 11 marks from the chapter 16 the last chapter that is chapter 17 web designing in a web designing you are going to have only one question from the five marks the chapter will consist of five marks the total marks weightage of your syllabus is 105 marks how many marks 105 marks in a 105 marks you are going to attend your question paper out of 70 out of 70 the theory part is 70 marks and practical part is 30 marks now let us start our new chapter chapter 1 the chapter 1 is overview of computers overview of computers in this chapter the total marks weightage is 8 marks the 8 marks is divided by the 1 mark 1 question 2 marks 1 question and 1 5 marks question totally you are, going, you are going to have the weightage of 8 marks from the first chapter called as overview of computers before starting the chapter let us see what is computer science i tell you what is computer later first we'll see that what is computer science a computer science deals with the theoretical fundamental of information it is computation and practical techniques for the applications computer science is a study of computing and information computer science is a study of computing and information computer science addresses both human made and natural information process such as communication control learning and intelligency especially in a human made computing system and machines let us see again what is computer science computer science deals with theoretical fundamental of information it compute and practical techniques for the applications computer science is a study of computation and information and also computer science addresses both human made and natural information processing such as communication control learning and intelligence especially in the human made computing system and machines why computer science is needed firstly the opportunities for the creativity and innovations opportunities for true creativity and innovations academic educations collaborative work and individual efforts limitless future opportunities limitless future opportunities civil liberty protection civil liberty protections making a positive difference in the world nowadays computer works on each and every nuke of the world now you people know that the major reasons major reasons why you require a computer science now let us see that why you are going to study the computer science now let us see why to study computer science if you are designing and creating a software system then computer science might be the right course of study if you are thinking of becoming a manager or administrator to a technical enterprises a degree in computer science or information and computer science could provide you with the background needed to achieve your goal computer science is a dynamically and rapidly growing area that has become an internal path of the world that we live in today's life so for the essential each and every needs the computers will play a role so studying of computers is necessary for all the persons now let us see the definition of computers we have already seen 
the definition of computer science. Students don't get confused with what is computers and what is computer science. Here, now we will see that we already have seen what is computer science. Now we are going to see the definition of computers. Computer is an automatic electronic machine that can store, recall and process the data. Computer is an automatic electronic machine that can store, recall and process the data. Computers are electronic machines that performs the task or complex calculation according to a set of instructions or a program. Computers are electronic machine that performs a task or complex calculation according to a set of instructions or a program. After seeing the definition, we'll let us see what are the characteristics or the features of computers. Here we have different characteristics of computers. The first character is a speed. A computer works with much higher speed and accuracy compared to the human being. Computer works much speeder than the human while it performing a mathematical calculation. Once you compare with the computers and the human being in a calculation part, the computers are very faster than the humans. A computer can process millions of instructions per second. It can process millions of instructions per second. The time taken by the computer for the operation is microseconds and nanoseconds. The time taken by the computers are for operations is microseconds or nanoseconds. That is the first character, that is speed. Now, we'll see what is accuracy. Accuracy, a computer performs a calculation 100% accuracy. That is nothing but exact results with a 100% exact results. If the result is in any fault, that may be due to the inconsistencies or inaccurate data which has been loaded. The computer will never make so easily a mistakes. A next character is resiliencies. Resiliencies are a computer can perform millions of tasks or a calculation with the same consistency and accuracy. With the same consistency and uh, accuracy. It doesn't feel any tired. It doesn't feel any tired or lack of concentration. It doesn't have any lack of concentration. Its memory also makes it superior to the human being. Its memory also makes it it's superior to the human being. Next thing we have versatility. Next we have versatility. Versatility refers to the cap capability of a computer to perform different kinds of work with the same accuracy and effectiveness. Versatility is refers to a capability of a computer to perform different kinds of works with the same accuracy with the same accuracy. Next character is reliability. What is reliability? A computer is reliable as it gives a consistent result for a similar set of data. That is, if we give a same set of inputs, n number of times will give you the same result. It will give you the same result. Next one, we have storage. Storage are where you are going to store huge amount of information. Where you are going to store a huge number of information with the different styles of information. It may be a video, audio, it may be in the text format that are that all it has been stored into a storage medium which is in large in size which is in large in size next we have automation automation a computer performs all the tasks automatically computer performs all the tasks automatically that is it performs a task with a manual inventions with a performs a task without a manual inventions and lastly we have memory Lastly, we have memory. A computer has built-in memory called as primary memory, where it stores data. The computer has built-in memory called as primary memory, where it stores data. The secondary storage is also one of the memory. 
or removable device such as CD, pen drive, etc., which are also to store the data. Here we have to see that in a memory we have two things that is primary memory and secondary memory. Primary memory is temporary memory and it has a less capacity and whereas secondary storage memory which is having a large number of huge amount of memory and it is a permanent memory. Here we have a different characteristics of computers. Let us see again what are the characteristics we have. Speed, accuracy, vigilance, versatility, reliability, storage, automation, cost effectiveness and last the memory. This are, these are the different points for the characteristics of computers. After seeing the different characteristics of computers, let us move on to the next topic called as functional components of computers and we can also tell that a block diagram of computers. A block diagram of computers display the structural representation of a computer system. It displays a structural representation of a computer system. The block diagram gives you the quick overview of working process of a computer for an inputting the data and retrieving the desired data. Here, we have majorly com combination of three inputs, three, uh, three units that is input, CPU and output. Input, CPU and output. These are the different units which you have it onto the block diagram. Once you observe this diagram, your CPU is a unit which has a combination of control unit, arithmetical and logical unit, and memory unit. From the next slide, we'll see one by one what is the working of these three units. We'll see what are the workings of a different three units in a block diagram separately from the next slide. Before seeing a separate functions of a units of block diagram, let us see the overall functions of a computer. Computer accepts a data and a program as inputs, which accepts a data and program as a inputs. Stores the data, program and retrieve as mm -hmm. and whenever it is required. Process the data as per the instruction is given by the program. Process the data as per the instruction is given by the programmer. And it also communicates the information as a output. It also communicates information as a output. The overall thing again will come again. What are the functionalities of computers is accepting a data and a program as an input. Store the data and program it is ret retrieves whenever it is required. And also process the data as per the instructions given by the programmer. And also communicates the information as an output. Overall, a three st stages are there in a basic function that is which accepts a data as an input and process the data as the instruction has been given and it also stores, it also stores. Once it finishes the process, it gives a output as a result. It gives a output as a result. Let us see the uh, separate functions of the different units of block diagram. The first unit is input unit. The input unit consists of input devices such as a mouse, keyboard, scanner, joysticks, etc. These devices are used to input information or instructions into the computer system. Like other electronic machines, a computer takes an input as raw data as a binary data and perform necessary processing, giving out a processed data, giving out a processed data. Therefore, the input unit is a medium of communication that takes place data from us and computer in an organized manner for processing. The input unit performs the following major functions that is it takes the input unit converts the input data or instructions into binary form into a binary form for the future processing. First one it is going to convert the instructions or program into a binary form and the second function is input unit transmits the data to the main memory of a computer. It transmits the data 
to the main mem memory of a computer. The major key point of input units are uh, input device is an hardware component. The input device is an hardware component that allows a user to enter the data and instruction into the computers. Allows it allows the user to enter the data and instructions into the computers. It is an uh, input device are like example mouse, keyboard, microphones, scanners, webcam, etc. Let us see the next unit that is nothing but CPU. CPU which has been expanded as central processing unit. A CPU is known as a brain of a computer system. It is known as a brain of a computer system. It is an electronic hardware device that process all the operation that process all the operations example arithmetic and logical operations of a computer. In other words all the major calculation operations are compre compressed are performed inside the CPU. It is also responsible for handling the operation of several units. Once you observe, once you have been observed the block diagram, the CPU which has been consisting of majorly three units that is control unit, arithmetic logical unit and memory unit, memory unit and these are the key points, these are the key points of central processing unit that is CPU. CPU carries out the instructions of computer program it reads and execute the program instruction it reads and executes the program instruction it is also known as a brain of computers it is also known as brain of computers cpu consists of a storage unit or a memory unit arithmetic logical unit and a control unit let us see the major three units which is being present into the cpu a memory unit is an essential part of a computer system which is used to store a data and instruction for before and after processing before and after processing the memory unit transmits the information to other units of a computer system when it is required the memory unit is majorly divided by two parts that is primary memory and secondary memory let us see the first what is that primary memory the primary memory cannot store large amount of information the data stored in a primary memory is temporary the data stored in a primary memory is temporary the data will be lost if there is there is any disconnection from the power supply if any disturbance in a power supply the data will be lost the primary memory usually stores the input data and immediately calculates a result. It stores immediately and calculates a result. The primary memory is also known as main memory or a temporary memory. For an example, we can tell that RAM, random access memory. Let us see the key points of a primary memory. That is temporary, which cannot store the huge amount of data when any power failures is been there in betweenly the data will be lost we can also tell the example that is ram now we'll move on to the secondary memory the secondary memory is when it has been used by a primary memory it is not possible to store a permanent data in future therefore there are uh, other option to store the data permanently for a future use which is known as secondary memory will come again when you store the information in a primary memory the storage is a temporary to store the information permanently we are going to use a one of the memory called as a secondary memory the data stored in a secondary memory is fast even when there is a power failure Usually, we can take the example as a hard disk. Now, we'll, have, we'll see the major key points of a memory unit. Memory unit is also known as the primary memory. Primary memory. And it stores the data and instruction, internal results, and finally, the output is temporary, temporarily. Now, we'll move on to the next topic that is arithmetic logical unit. 
the data input through the input device is stored into a primary unit. The arithmetic logical unit performs the arithmetic and logical operation. The arithmetic unit control supplies the operations such as addition, subtraction, division and multiplication. On the other side, the logical unit controls the control operations such as AND, OR, and NOT operator, etc. Apart from it, the logical unit also responsible for the performing a server, several other operations such as comparing, selecting, matching and merging. What are the other operations it is going to perform? Apart from AND or NOT, it is also going to perform perform comparing, selecting, matching and merging. The information or data transmitted by the ALU from the stage from the storage unit only when it is required. The information or data transmitted to the ALU for storage unit from the storage unit only when it is required. After completing the operation, the result is either returns to the storage unit or furtherly processing or getting stored. Here we'll see the major key points of the arithmetic and logical units. All arithmetic operations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and logical functions such as AND or NOT or are to be performed. A non-numerical data result in true or false along with a logical function. Now let us move to the next unit. Control unit. As the name suggests, the control unit of a CPU controls all the activities and operations of a computer. It controls all the activities and operations of a computer. It is also responsible for controlling input and output, memory and other devices which is being connected to the CPU. The control unit acts like a supervisor which determines the sequence in which computer program and instructions are executed. It retrieves the instructions from the memory. It retrieves the instructions from the memory. Decodes the instructions. Interpret the instructions and understand the sequence of the task to be performed according to Lee. In it future transmits the instructions to the other part of computer system to execute them. In short, the control unit determines the sequence of operation to be executed. To be executed, the major key points of control unit is control unit is it act as a central nervous system, it act as a central nervous system and ensures that the information is stored correctly and the program instructions are followed in proper sequence. It also coordinates all the input and output devices. And next coming for the storage unit. The result obtained after processing will be, will be in a primary memory. This data or information can be stored in storage devices or the secondary memory unit or into the secondary memory unit. These are the three major units which comes under the CPU. What are the things comes? Memory unit, control unit and store, uh, control unit and arithmetic logical unit. Now we'll see the last unit that is output unit. The output unit consists of a devices that are usually to display the result or output process. The output data is first stored into the main memory and then displays in a human readable. Human readable that is nothing but the output device. Some of the widely used output devices are monitor, printer, projector, etc. These are the operation which is being performed by a CPU. And let us move on to the next topic, the evolutions of computer. Evolutions of computers. Abacus, the year of 2500 BC. Abacus is the first known calculating machine used for counting. It is made up of beads on cords and it is used for a simple arithmetical calculations. The cards corresponds to the position of decimal digits. Cards corresponds to the position of decimal digits. And beads used to 
represent a digits beats are used to represent a digits even today the complex calculation which are performed by advanced computers are calculated using a abacus even today the complex calculation which are performed by advanced computer are calculated using a abacus let us see the how the abacus looks let us see how the abacus looks when you observe this picture this picture which represents a abacus in abacus once you see that the chords that represents the position of a decimal digits a chord corresponds to position of decimal digits and beats are used to represent a digits this is how the calculation are being performed it is used for a simple calculation or nowadays a new calculations also being done by using a abacus and here we have a second evolution of computers that is napier bones napier bone it was invented by a john napier it was invented by a john napier he is a scottish mathematician it was used for a multiplication here we have a set of bones we have a set of bones consist of nine rods it consist of nine rods one for each digit 1 to 9 and a constant rod for the digit 0 and a constant rod for a digit 0 once you observe the pictures it indicates from 0 to 9 and the constant rod which is being indicated for a 0 here we are going to use this is was being used for a uh, most of that a multiplication table for a multiplication table let us see the next next evolution of a computers a third evolution that is slide rule it was invented in the year of 1633 ad a slide rule was invented by a williams it was based on the principle that actual distance from the starting point of a rule is directly proportional to logarithm of a number of printed onto the rule this rule is used to perform multiplication and division by a method of adding and subtraction will come again the slide rule was invented by william it is based on a principle that actual distance from the starting point of the rule is directly proportional to the logarithm of the number of numbers printed onto the rule this rule is used to perform a multiplication and division this rule is used to perform multiplication and division by a method of adding and subtraction this is also one of the evolution of a evolution of a computers just observe the picture how the slide rule looks out oh this we have a adding machine a pascalin in the year of 1642 ad it was invented in the year of 1642 which came to exist the rotating wheels the calculator was being developed by a french philosopher basil pascal invented the first mechanical calculator in the year of 1641 it was named pascalin it had a box with eight movable wheels it had a box with eight movable wheels called dials the number for calculating were entered with the dials it could add subtract divide and multiply it could add subtract divide and multiply the number the numbers as big as thousands it was using simple components such as gears and levers such as gears and levers this is a procedure today a electronic calculator he was inspired by the component 
he he was in, uh, inspired by the computation work of his father job and devised the model he was in the only year of 19 when he was devised as a model will come again the very important points of this base clean pass clean invent mechanical calculator in the year of 1640 it was named pascal a rotating wheels rotating wheels calculator had a box with eight movable wheels called as dials the number for calculating entered with a dial it could add subtract divide and multiply the number as big as 1000 these are the important things which was been performed by a pascalin invention here we have one more thing that is called as a lebens calculator it was invented in the year of 1650 it is invented in the year of 1650 ad 1650 ad it was invented by a godfred lebens built it a calculator that could perform addition subtraction multiplication and division the with the numbers just observe the picture if this is called as lebens calculator here we have a sixth evolution that is jacquard looms it was invented in the year of 1801 joseph mary invented a powerful loom that was used to punch wooden carts it was used to punch a uh, wooden carts to automatically wave increasingly de detailed a pattern including pictures and text it was detailed in pattern including pictures and text it was considered as a first read only memory device it is very important that it was considered as a first read only memory device which was been invented by a uh, joseph mary in the year of 1801 it is a very important evolution that is the difference engine the charles babbage charles babbage a british mathematician and an engineer designed an automatic calculation machine in the year of 1822 he called it as difference engine later he thought of a mechanical construction which was known as mechanical digital computers it was known as mechanical digital computers babbage called this analytical engine analytical engine consists of five units consists of five units developed by the modern computers charles babbage was the father of computers will come again the charles babbage was a british mathematician and engineer designed an automatic calculation machine in the year of 1822 he called it as difference engine later he thought of mechanical construction which was known as mechanical digital computers babbage called this analytical engine engine which is going to consist of five units and he also was called as a father of computers he also called as father of computers let us see that how the difference engine looks in looks into a next slide just have a look how the difference engine an analytical engine was looking here we have a first programmer in the year of 1833 lady La, lady ada lavancy her a mathematical genius came to the light the most strikingly in her work with charles babbage a charles babbage was pathway into the process of designing the first mechanical computers that is nothing but the analytical engine she started writing the first computer algorithm and she besides that a later computer will have the abilities to do more than more than mathematical calculation and that he also analyzed that analytical engine 
was in a essence essence and a mission for a manipulating symbols and a music notations uh, ada called herself as a as a, a first programmer let us see the in key points of a first programmer lady ada lavensi started writing the first computer algorithm and he presides that the later computer will have the ability to do more than a mathematical calculation ada called herself an uh, analyst and metropolitan and lady ada lavensi is a first programmer today let us see that what are the things we have completed we have seen a different evolutions we have seen a uh, different evolutions of a computers let us see into the next session thank you now let us see the generations of computers what is that generations generation in a computer te terminology is a change in technology the generation in a computer terminology is a change in technology a computer is being used initially the generation term was used to distinguish between the varying hardware technology nowadays a generation includes both hardware and the software which together make up a entire computer system there are five computer generation no now till date each generation has been discussed in detail along with the time period and characteristics in the following slide let us see the first generation the first generation which starts in the year of 1940 to 1956 this first generation of computer uses vacuum tubes for switching circuits and magnetic drums for memory the generation use vacuum tubes vacuum tubes was used for switching circuits and magnetic drums for memory they were large in size occupied a lot of space and produces n number of amount of heat they were expensive and consume large amount of electricity most of the time the heat generated causes the computer to manufacture it operated only on machine level language it operated only on machine level language let us see the again key points of a first generation the first generation of computer used vacuum tubes what was used the vacuum tubes for switching circuits and magnetic drums for memory they were large in size occupied a lot of space and produces n number of amount of heat they were expensive and consume large amount of electricity most of the time the heat generator causes the computer to manufacture it operates only on the machine level language these are the key points of first generation let us move on to the second generation before moving on to the second generation we'll see that uh, still more points on to the first generation how the input was been given in the sense input was been based on punch cards paper tapes and paper paper tapes and output was printed it solves only one problem at a time it solves only one problem at a time the accessing time is milliseconds accessing time is milliseconds and universal automatic computer and electrical numerical integrated and computer are the first generation computing device what are the device was there universal automatic computer and electrical numerical integrated and computer are the example of the first generation let us see the second generation second generation second generation started in the year of 1956 in the year of 1956 to 1963 the second generation of a computer used transistors they used transistors allowing computer to become sm smaller faster and economically efficient and more reliable than the first generation of a computers more reliable than first generation computers it is used plastic card it is used punch cards for input 
and printouts for the output. It use punch cards for the input and printouts for the output. Second generation of a computer uses assembly language, uses a assembly language, which allows a programmer to specify instructions in a word, to specify the instruction in a word. They also developed a high level programming language were also being developed at this time, such as a earlier version as a COBOL and Photon. Memory storage used was a magnetic core technology and the accessing speed is also into the microsecond. We'll come again the key points of a second generation. The second generation of computer used transistors, uses transistors, allowing a computer to become smaller, smaller, faster, economically efficient and more reliable than the first generation computers. It used punch cards for input and printouts for the output. Second generation computer uses an assembly level language which the programmer to specify the instructions in a word. To specify instructions in a word. The high level programming language were also being developed at this time. Such as the earlier version was a COBOL and the Fortron. The memory storage uses a magnetic core technology and it also accessing speed is in nanoseconds. We'll say, uh, shall we, we shall move to the third generation. Third generation. The third generation started in the year of 1964 to 1971. In the year of 1964 to 1971. The development of integrated circuit was made used in third generation computers. They used integrated circuits in a third generation. Transistors were, were made smaller in size and placed into a silicon chip. What was being made? A transistor was being made smaller in size and placed into the silicon chips. The processing speed and efficiency of a computer increased. A keyboard and monitor keyboard and monitor were used as input and output devices. The computer were interfaced with the operating system which allows to solve many problems at a time. Accessing speed is in nanosecond. Accessing speed is in nanosecond. Some of LS, LSIC and VLSIC is nothing but LSIC is large scale integrated circuit and very large scale integrated circuit were used in this generation. We'll come again for uh, we'll come again to the third generation with the key points. They developed a integrated circuit was made into the third generation. Transistors were made in small in size and placed onto the silicon chip. The processing speed and efficiency of a computer increases. The processing speed and efficiency time efficiency of a computer increases. Keyboard and monitors. Keyboard and monitors were used as input and output devices. The computer were interfaced with the operating system. Computer were interfaced with the operating system, which allowed to solve a many problem at a time. To allow to solve a many problem at a time and the accessing speed also changed into a nanosecond accessing speed is in, into a nanosecond some of lsic and vlsic were used the expansion of lsic is nothing but large scale integrated circuit and very large scale integrated circuit were used on to the third generation we'll move on to the fourth generation Fourth generation started in the year of 1971 till present. In this fourth generation, they introduced a microprocessor. They introduced microprocessor were used in fourth generation computers. As the thousands of integrated circuits were built onto a single silicon chip. The thousands of integrated circuits were built on a single silicon chips. Network technology were introduced at this time. Network technology were introduced at this time. The fourth generation computer also saw the development of GUI, the mouse and the 
and held a device. In the fourth generation, computer also saw the development of GUI. The mouse and handheld device, mouse and handheld device, accessing speed is also changed as nano to nano or we can also tell that picoseconds. Let us see the key points of a fourth generation again. A microprocessor were used in a fourth generation computer as the thousands of integrated circuits were built onto the single silicon chip. Network technology were introduced at this time. Fourth generation computer also saw the development of GUI. The accessing speed is in nano or picoseconds. These are the different key points of a fourth generation. Let us see what are the things in a fifth generation. The fifth generation. Fifth generation which started with the present and the beyond which comes into the artificial intelligences a fifth generation computing device based on artificial intelligences are still in a development stage a fifth generation will be a close to the bridge the gap between the computing and thinking it will be a bridge bridge that gap between computing and thinking this these are the things which comes across into the fifth generation before getting into the Next topic, we'll just have a glance of all the generation. The first generation started in the year of 1940 to 1956. In that year, the vacuum tube was used. The second generation, which starts with 1956 to 1963. There, in the second generation, transistors was introduced. The third generation, which started in the year of 1964 to 1971. It where they introduced integrated circuits and fourth generation which has been started in the year of 1971 to present in the fourth generation they introduced microprocessor the fifth generation which is to be the present and upcoming years and still the development we are into the development stage of fifth generation these are the different generations which has been into the technology of computers after seeing the generations of computers, now we'll look into the classifications of computers. The classifications of computers, there are different types of computers available these days. The functions of each type of computer is to process the data and provide some output to the user. However, the method or a technique used by the computer to process and handle the data may be different. We can classify the computers according to the following three categories based on operating principle, based on application, based on size and capability. We will come again according to the classification we have three criteria that is based on operating principle, based on application, based on size and capability. Once you observe the diagram of the slide, here we have a majorly divided by three categories, by type, by size, by purpose. Once you see that by type, in a by type, we have three types, that is analog computers, digital computers, hybrid computers. In the second form, by size, in a by size, we have Micro computer, mini computer, mainframe computer, super computer. Next one, it's by purpose, that is general purpose and special purpose. Now, we'll see in detail one by one. First, we'll go to the by type computers, that is analog, digital, and hybrid computers. Now, we will see the classification based on principles of operation principles of operation in that principles of operation we are going to see that first computer that is nothing but uh, analog computers analog computers uh, analog computers is a form of computers that is used continuous physical phenomena such as electrical mechanical or in hydraulic quantities to the model the, pro the problem being solved 
they operate by measuring rather than the counting they operate by measuring rather than the counting the computer functions by establishing similarities between a two quantities a similarities between two quantities that are usually expressed as voltage or a current usually expressed as voltage or a current a uh, analog computers are powerful tool to solve the differential equation will come again the important key points of analog computers are they are operated by measuring rather than a counting measured rather than the counting the computer function by establishing similarities between a two quantities that are usually expressed as voltage or a current uh, analog computers are a powerful tool to solve a differential engine now let us see the second type that is digital computers or digital computers but it is a computer that performs a calculation and a logical operation with a quantities represented as a digits which represent as a digits usually in the binary numbers a uh, digital computers are those that operates with uh, information numerically or otherwise represented in a digital form such computer process the data into a digital values they give the result with the accuracy and at a fast rate on the other hand a digital computers operates on a digital data such as numbers it is used binary numbers system in which there are only two digits that is zeros and ones each one is called as a bit each one is called as a bit all the data representation will be in the series of zeros and one it will be in the series of zeros and one not dependent of the time of other values it never depends on the time of other values digital computers are unique the digital computer is made for both a general purpose and a special purpose a special purpose computers is one that is built for specific applications the digital computer they are operated essentially by counting operated essentially by counting all quantities are expressed as discrete digits expressed as discrete digit or a number a digital computers are useful for evaluating arithmetical expression and manipulating of a data evaluating arithmetical expression and manipulation of a data majority of a majority of the computers used in the world today is our digital computers we'll see the third type which is being based on principle of operations that is nothing but the hybrid computers hybrid computers a combination of a computer those are capable of accepting input and output in both digital and analog signal a hybrid computer system set up offers a cost effective method of performing a complex simulation a hybrid computing system is a combination of desirable features of an analog and digital computers it is mostly used for a automatic operation of complicated physical purpose and machine nowadays uh, analog to digital and digital to analog converts are used for transforming the data in suitable forms for either the type of computing this computers again will come across a, a key point for a hybrid it's a computer which combines a feature of both analog and digital system or called as an hybrid hybrid computers system set up offer a cost effective method of performing a complex simulation it is used for automatic operation of complicated physical process and machines for an example in an hospital automated in, in incentive care unit a uh, analog devi device might measure the patient temperature blood pressure and other vital sign the measurement which are in the analog might then be converted into the numbers and supplied to a digital component in the system this components are used to monitor the patients to monitor the 
patients and sends a signal if any abnormal reading are detected. And hybrid computers are mainly used in specialized tasks. Here we have seen a three major three major types of computers, which is being based on which is being based on principles of operation based on principles of operation. Nextly, we'll see that. Nextly, we'll see see that what are the types which comes across. What are the types which comes across? The computer based on configurations. Here we have different types of computers based on configurations. The first computer is micro computer. Second one is mini computer. And we have mainframe computers and supercomputers. Now we will discuss one by one. The first computer is micro computers. Micro computers is also called a personal computers. It was been introduced in the year of 1970. A number of processor in a microcomputer will be one or two processor. It is used by one person at a time. Example, a personal computer that we call it as a PC. A major type of personal computers are a desktop computers and as well as a portable computers. Portable computers are nothing but a laptop. Will come again the key major key point of a microcomputers. A microcomputer is called as a personal computers, which was being introduced in the year of 1970. A number of processor in a microcomputers will be one or two processor. It is used by one person, which is used by only one person at a time. Example as a personal computer, so that we call it as a PC. And major type of a personal computers are a desktop computers and a portable computers. We'll move on to the second type that is mini computers. That is mini computers. Mini computers are in a medium sized computers that are costlier and powerful than a micro computers. The major difference between a micro and mini computer is that a mini computer is usually designed to serve for multiple users simultaneously. Whereas microcomputers which is used only by a single user but as mini computers are designed to serve multi users simultaneously this type of a computers needed a less power and less cooling arrangement it is needed a less power and less cooling arrangement up to eight users can use the system simultaneously running their own individual program that is a major difference which we have between a mini computers as well as your micro computers. We'll come again to the mini computers. Mini computers are in a medium size computers that are costlier and powerful than a micro computers. Uh, important difference are it's nothing but wherein micro computer uses a single user, but in a mini computers, the multiple user can use simultaneously. This type of computers needed very less power and less cooling arrangement. Uh, eight users can use the system simultaneously running their own, running the own programs. That is nothing but running the different programs into a different systems at a time. We call that as a mini computers. Let us see the next computer that is a mainframe computers. Mainframe computers were introduced in the year of 1975. It is very large in size. It is more powerful than a micro computers, which consists of multiprocessor, which consists of a multiprocessor. It is designed to perform a multiple user at the same time. A mainframe computers can serve up to 50,000, up to 50,000 users at the same time, 50,000 users at the same time. Uh, typically, a uh, mainframe computers can execute 16 million instructions per second. For an example, we have NEC 610 and DEC 10. These are the different types which comes into the mainframe computers. We will come again a major key points of mainframe computers. It was introduced in the year of 1975 and it is large in size, more powerful than the mini computers. It consists of multiple users. It is designed to perform a multi-users at the same time. 
a mainframe computer can serve up to 50,000 users at the same time. Whereas in the previous type, we was using only 8 users. Whereas in mainframe computers, we are going to serve a 50,000 users at the same time. If the computers which executes the 16 million instructions per second, which execute 16 million instructions per second, and we have an example of NEC 610 and DEC 10. Let us move on to the next type, supercomputers. When a supercomputer was introduced in the year of 1980s, in the year of 1980s, a supercomputer is the largest and fastest and most expensive. It is largest, fastest and most expensive than any other computers. It is normally used by the large business organizations that are required extraordinary amount of computing power. Computing speed is 10 times faster than any other type of computers. These computers are capable of executing than 10,000 million instructions per second. How many instructions can be executed per second? That is 10 million instructions per second. Supercomputers is used for solving or handling a large scale numerical problem in scientific and engineering field. Here we have discussed major type which has been based on configuration are uh, microcomputers, mini computers, mainframe computers and supercomputers. These are the types which comes across based on configurations. Now let us discuss what are the applications of computers? Firstly, we are going to look, at, look on business. A computer has a speed of calculation, accuracy, reliability and versatility, which has made it an integrated part in all business organization. Majorly, computer is used in business organizations for payroll calculation, budgeting, sales and analysis, financial forecasting, managing employee database, maintenance of stocks, etc. These are the major things which has been used into business. Let us go to the next one that is banking. Today, banking is almost totally dependent on the computer banking providers. That's a following facilities like online accounting facility, which includes checking a current balance, making a deposit, an old draft, a check, checking interest charges, shares and trustee records. Like uh, ATM missions which are completely automated are making it even easier for the customer to deal with the banks. These are the different sectors where in a banking computers is being used. Next we'll move on to the insurance. Insurance companies are keeping all the record up to date with the help of computers. Insurance company and financial housing and stock broking are widely used computers for the concern. The insurance company are maintaining a database of all clients which information shows a procedure to continue with the policies, starting date of a policy, next due installment of a policies, maturity and these are the things which has been used by the insurance. When you come up, come to the education, when it comes to the education, the computer helps in providing a lot of facilities in the education system. The computer provides a tool in education system known as CBE, that is computer based education. The computer provides a tool in education system known as CBE, that is called as computer based education. CBE involves controlling, delivery and evaluation of learning. Computer education is rapidly increasing the graph of number of computer students. There are a number of methods in which education institutes can use a computers to educate, educate the uh, students. It is used to prepare a database about a performance of a students and analyze is carried out onto the basis. This is what how the education in education center the computers is used in a marketing. Once come, when you come across marketing, in the marketing, uses for, for computers are advertising. When you come across advertising, with the computer advertising, professionals create art and graphs, write and receive a copy and print and 
placement ad with the goal of selling a more product for example one more example we can go for home shopping home shopping has made has been made possible through the use of computerized cat catalogs and that provides access to produce the information and permits directly entry of order to be filed by the customers this is in a marketing once you come across healthcare when you come come across healthcare the computers have become a very important part in hospitals labels and dispensaries they are being used in hospitals to keep the record of a patient and medicines it is also used in scanning and diagnosis different disease like ecg ultrasound and ct scan etc are also done by computerized machine in a following areas where the computer is used in healthcare example diagnosis system lab patient monitoring system a pharma information system surgery these are the uh, sectors where in healthcare it is used next coming to the engineering design engineering design computers are widely used in a engineering purpose one of the major area is cad that is computer aided design that provides a creations and modification of images such fields are like a structural engineering industrial engineering and architecture engineering and one more important application is used the computers used in militaries the computers are largely used in defense modern tanks missiles weapons etc military all also employ computerized control system some militarized area whereas a computer has been used like missile control military communication military operations and planning planning military operations and planning and also a smart, smart weapons once you come across a communication communication is the way to convey a message an idea of a picture or speech that is received receives and understand clearly and correct by the person from whom it has been meant some of the main, main areas which has been applied in communications are email chatting usenet ftp telnet and video conference these are the important categories once you go or come across a government 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 uses the computers in the in the sectors of budgeting sales tax department income tax department communication computation of mail and female ratio computerizing of voter list computerizing of pan card weather forecast these are the areas where in a government uses the computers again we'll come across a key points of applications of computers a first one is business banking insurance educations marketing healthcare engineering designs military communications and a government your and your applications of computer your well students this is the last topic of a first chapter we'll come again to the next session taking a new chapter thank you students